what's going on my people welcome back to the lift capital youtube channel where life is for the taking it is the host himself ted talk money coming back at you to tell y'all something today i really hope you guys have been enjoying the past 24 hours because you know what you get over here another 24 hours of blessings guys as the year is really coming to a close we really want to just again send out just a big shout out to the community throughout all this year who's really been supporting us over here at lift capital i really hope you guys had a merry christmas and as we're getting closer closer to a new year, let us remain focused. As you guys can see right here, the crypto market is in a bit of a capitulation. We're going to be covering with you all, of course, the latest that's been revealed in regards to a settlement with the XRP SEC lawsuit. If you guys didn't know, the chief legal officer, Stuart Alderodi, just recently revealed that there was a settlement offerment, offering uh, to Ripple in this lawsuit. So really good to find out, really fascinating things I want to cover with you all today today as you guys can see right here xrp you know doing about down down about three percent on the day you all can see here on the week still about 2.5 percent on the up we were able to actually reach 64 uh, 64 cents a few days ago here just yesterday you guys could see the most important thing is that we're still up about 68 percent on the year if you've been holding xrp for at least a year you are still bullish okay and a lot of people have really been losing faith in xrp now i want to give you all an overall um, thing here, Whale Wire put it out that actually now you guys have been seeing that difference, that depression in the Bitcoin price recently as Mt. Gox has officially started those repayments to the customers after nearly a decade. This cash distribution signals the release of over $6 billion in Bitcoin. So I'm sure you guys have been seeing some differences that have been happening out there. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Mt. Gox, Mt. Gox was like the first first crypto exchange that was there it's now defunct but there's a lot of bitcoin that was stolen well that bitcoin was actually reversed and repaid back to customers so there, we're going to be seeing some more uh shakeouts really in a sense in the in the crypto market overall now next i want you guys to see this squawk box put some things out here in regards to tether now it's no coincidence that we're seeing new uh stable coin involvement in the mainstream media now we're getting closer to 2024 of course now past the holiday season listen to this y'all have now been uh, put onto tether though frankly there have been questions about tether for for, for some time i want to just read you uh, two sentences this is from the wall street journal you've seen the story tether uh which is incorporated as you know in the Br british virgin islands doesn't publish audited financial statements or complete balance sheet leaving outsiders with an incomplete picture of the company's health. And um, there's a gentleman, Peter Crane. Peter uh, is the president of Crane Data. He says, I've been skeptical and in disbelief that they, that is you, can get away with the lack of disclosure and with limited transparency. If you do... Now, what I want you all to see here is that the, what the Tether co-founder is saying is that the crypto industry now needs self-policing to survive. It's really interesting that CNBC is choosing to get on the phone, interview with a stable coin that has a very shifty reserve, uh, reserve assets, very, very murky reserves. You have reserves. Why don't you show them? And so I'll ask you the question. Why don't you? Well, what I can say is in the last eight years of Tether's operating history, they've always redeemed every token for exactly $1. I sold the company in 2000, at the end of 2015, and the principals have continued to operate that with, with, in my opinion, to the absolute best of their ability and with the best risk mitigation tactics in the industry. It has withstood the test of time. So why do you think that then the questions persist as they do about what's really going on and what really is backing these stable coins? Well, Tether does offer on its website proof of its reserves or actually audits every few months. They post different audits on where all that cash is um, currently being, how it's being invested right, right now. People still question it, and these questions are okay, and it, the industry as a whole is going to become more and more transparent due to these recent failures of FTX and BlockFi and these other companies. And so that is really good for the industry moving forward. So, so you think actually Stablecoin, uh, or rather I should say Tether, will ultimately be forced to disclose exactly what backs these coins? Well, we'll see how these regulations play out. 
Um, right now, with the Republicans controlling the House, it's going to take a while for any regulations to really come to bear. However, our industry has done an excellent job in self-policing. More and more people are putting more awareness around how to do that. Um, CZ from Binance is actually starting a fund and also really leading the charge in what it looks like to offer up proof of reserves and other programs to make customers and retail Wait. investors more comfortable. I, I want to go back to the idea. You just said you think the industry is great at self-policing. We've had a whole number of failures, even in the last two weeks. And obviously, the, uh, the blow up of FTX is, is you know, the, the big headline. You think that the industry has done a great job of self-policing? I mean, I think about all the venture capitalists who, big name venture capitalists who put money in. I don't think they did any real self-policing. Arguably, you're right. CZ might have policed this a little bit. Frankly, I think the press did a pretty good job uh, in the context of you know, uh, Coindesk, which was the one that broke that story. Yeah, no, it's an excellent point. The industry, the crypto industry doesn't have a government or anyone else to bail it out. So in order for it to survive long term, it does need to do an excellent job of self-policing. And that's what these things bring to the table, that we're going to, as an industry, have to come together and do a better job to provide consumers the confidence that they need. And to do that in the future, it will lead to more decentralization, meaning less trust in these centralized actors that are running these companies, because it's going to be done in code versus by the responsibility of a centralized organization. So do you think long term, these exchanges, and I'm thinking obviously FTX was one of them, Binance is another, Coinbase is obviously a publicly traded company uh, here in the United States, and as a result, I think is probably the most regulated uh, of that group. Yeah, absolutely. I do believe that that's why Coinbase and the companies that are regulated in the U.S., it, they have to meet a higher bar. They have to do much more than these other offshore companies. So as investors, especially in the U.S., if that makes you more comfortable, absolutely follow the companies that, that follow that, that are right. more regulated. Yeah. So this is very important that we really pay attention to everything that's going on. The reason why this is actually happening is because just Tether recently Apple just minted Tether lately. just recently minted another billion USDT citing inventory replenishment. Folks, really? I understand this is USDT, these tethers that could just mint out of nowhere. If you were to go downstairs make your own printing of fiat physical money okay and mint yourself a billion dollars just extra you know for your inventory replenishment yeah you'd get in some very very hot water but the ceo now of tether has said that they've issued a psa in their twitter explaining that the transaction in question constituted a inventory replenishment on the ethereum blockchain Folks, noting that these this authorized this was authorized, but not an issue transaction, meaning the amount will be used as inventory for requests and chain swaps. Guys, again, there are nine hundred and twenty five million dollars worth of USDT that has been authorized, but not issued on Ethereum as of December 26, 2023. Yowza. Folks, one thing, if you're new to our channel, we really talk a lot about regulations and how they're going to be really applying to the world of crypto. And really, again, we focus so much on utility cryptos. You really have to ask the question, how are stable coins going to be really enacted? I wanted to focus on the UK since they want to actually be, you know, more um, digital focused. They want to become a global crypto hub. How exactly are stable coins going to get regulated? Stable coins, the first phase of the UK's crypto regulation with stable coins taking up 11% of the crypto market cap, one might wonder why the UK is pressing hard with implementing a regime for stable coins rather than for Bitcoin or the rest of the unbacked crypto ecosystem. I mean, you can ask the logical question for yourself. You know, it's 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 the closest thing that people have to money laundering in recent history or um, um, counterfeiting or money laundering or just creation counterfeiting really in a sense, creating your own money out of thin air. So they say here, however, a question remains as to the impact of the growing introduction of tokenized deposits. Listen to this. Tokenized deposits are likely to be the way that a much wider tranche of financial institutions get involved in the digital asset space. Tokenized deposits, given the financial institutions that may issue these tokens, are already regulated, have a broader base, and these tokens might gain momentum and traction more quickly than stable coins. You guys hear this? Tokenized deposits. Definitely look that up for yourselves. 
So next right here in regards to, you know, global crypto news and just really what's been happening. China now has announced a crackdown on illegal crypto exchanges that are happening in China. Now, if you guys aren't familiar exactly with the back and forth or the flip flop in regards to China, they've been they banned crypto mining. They banned crypto or crypto exchanges where well, they're cracking down even harder on these exchanges, these uh, illegal exchanges facilitate $15.8 billion worth of yuan in transactions. Uh, you had an inspector of the state administration of foreign exchanges offered insight on the illicit processes that underground banks engaged in syn systematic purchases of virtual currencies, then navigated them through the web of overseas trading platforms to sell the acquired assets. This maneuver was Aim to obtain the requisite foreign currency, completing the conversion between yuan and foreign currencies, which that's what XRP is going to facilitate. If you guys don't know, there's already a partnership between Ripple and China. You see it right here, guys. Ripple enters the China market with the Lian Lian partnership that was announced back in 2018. Folks, 2018, Lian Lian will use Ripple's block, you know, at RippleNet. Uh, X current or, you know, of course, ODL <clears throat> to process real time gross, uh, real time cross border payments into China for merchants and consumers, including invoice payments, e-commerce payments and the such. This Lian Lian Global, your cross border growth partner. You could see it here, guys, helping to seamlessly send cross border payments for any platform. Finextra, FinTech payments, they've all mentioned this Lian Lian. With 1.5 million e-commerce stores, they're partnered with Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan, City Bank. So, guys, that's the thing. If they're already connected with RippleNet, you don't think that these partners have access to it as well? Of course they do. Of course they do. So, um, next, I wanted to share this piece with you all here. This that CZ's, CZ's wealth has grown by twenty five billion dollars in twenty twenty three. Seriously, this is really interesting. What can happen being a a big X or a big a crypto crypto influencer or in, or in a sense just really again CZ and you know SBF and them really having a lot of wealth, being very wealthy. It's very interesting. Even though he's going through all of these legal woes, CZ's wealth has grown by twenty five billion in this year alone, which is fantastic. Just big ups to him. He's the 35th, 35th richest person globally. Um CZ holds Bitcoin and BNB. Um, but also, as you guys know, he did plead guilty. Binance and CZ did plead guilty to the anti-money laundering sanctions that have come as a result of the, you know, revealing that Binance actually had connections to Hamas. And there's a lot of I mean, just the fact that they did plead guilty is there's going to be so many ramifications as a result of this. But you can see that he's still getting that bag. I want to show you all here that the top crypto exchanges right now. Who do you think is number one? Binance. Binance. Well, you guys remember when Binance, um, you know, how they reacted exactly to the SEC lawsuit? Well, that's this right here. Binance says it will delist XRP January 13th. You guys can see they made that announcement as soon as that happened. But here's the latest delisting efforts. It's looking like they're going to be delisting, okay, about 11 pairs. 11 trading pairs that are focused on the British pound and XRP, um, the, uh, the British pound, that that pair is now going to be delisted. Isn't that something? XRP to the pound, pair to the pound is going to be delisted. Fascinating, y'all. So let's get to the main piece. Like I said, I wanted to talk with you guys about Stuart Adderody. He recently put out that there was a effort to settle a settlement effort. A offer was given years ago, years ago to Brad Garlinghouse and all of Ripple. Guys, listen to this. Ripple CLO chief legal officer exposes the SEC's failed arm twisting attempt in a in this XRP lawsuit. According to the lawyer, the SEC had proposed a settlement in which they would announce that XRP is a security and the market would be given a brief window to come into compliance. However, Stewart noted that Ripple rejected the offer, asserted two main reasons. First, they maintain that XRP is not a security. And second, the SEC had failed to establish a framework for crypto compliance Two. 
You see, why would we accept an offer when you guys aren't even doing your job? Alderodi further emphasized that the core issue of the case was proving that XRP as a crypto in and of itself is not inherently a security. That's the thing, folks. Right now, you see XRP, us as XRP holders, we've already won. But the world hasn't really come to that conclusion yet because there's still a lawsuit. But the core issue has already been resolved. OK, he went on to say no matter the spin that Clayton Hinman and Gensler or anyone puts on this case now. It was always about one thing. Let me show you all here before the SEC sued Ripple, Chris and Brad uh, three years ago today. They offered us the following settlement. The SEC would announce to the market that, they, that XRP is, again, like I said, a security in the market will be given a short window of time <clears throat> moving forward here. The main issue is proving that XRP is not in and of itself a security we put everything on the line few thought we would win but we did in the process we exposed the sec for the hypocritical tyrant it is and the industry in the u.s live to fight another day onward to 2024 much love right there to Stuart out of he has been i mean just a road dog really staying right there and everybody who is in the xrp community you guys should give him a follow big respect to Stuart Alderodi for what he does. Last but not least, I want to show you all this tweet that Ripple put out there. Uh, it was on Christmas Eve saying, as the year comes to a close, we want to express gratitude to our partners, customers, and you, our community, for your support. From all of us at Ripple, wishing you a season of joy and a remarkable road ahead. Look, I appreciate you making it to this part of the video. Be sure that you hit the like button. Share this video with someone you know who has XRP, who doesn't have XRP. And as well, be sure that you subscribe to our channel to really be a part. Like I said, drop in the comments uh, how you've been feeling about Lyft Capital all this year, how you've really been feeling about the crypto industry and what you think that you can expect in 2024. We're really looking forward to it and really looking to hear from you. With that being said, y'all, I'll holler at you later. Peace.